All right, welcome back to New Testament Survey as we continue on to talk about the religious and philosophical settings of the New Testament. We're going to talk a little bit about the various Jewish sects uh, and political groups that arose during the intertestamental period and are spoken of particularly in the Gospels and in the beginning of the book of Acts. Uh, as we look at the Jewish religious settings, there's several different groups that pop up, uh, although there were some that were in the old Te or in the uh, Gospels, but never actually make an appearance. Uh, and we'll talk about a few of those. Uh, as we talk about these, I want you to think uh, uh, political association or ideological association. Uh, so as we think about these various sects, uh, you need to understand that their political ideology is not necessarily right or wrong, it's their perspective on how they see the world. Uh, and it helps to understand where they're coming from in relation to, to Jesus Christ, where their relationship uh, where their relationship to the temple is, uh, and that type of, type of thing. So let's talk about a few of these. And what I want to do is I want to think of these in terms of right and left, or uh, maybe in our minds today we think conservative and liberal or progressive as compared to more traditional. So if you think about these term in, in maybe more modern day terms, it might be a little more more uh, easy for us to swallow where it is that these people were coming from in the days of Christ. So uh, as we talked a little bit about this last week when we talked about the Maccabees, we talked about the fact that the Maccabees were originally uh, a group of conservative traditionalists, uh, pious Jews that wanted to observe the law in Israel. Uh, and eventually, as the uh, Hasmonean Empire that they had set up uh, continued on, the more they became aristocratic, the more they became comfortable with uh, progressive thoughts and Hellenistic living or Hellenism, which is Greek speaking, Greek thinking, Greek dress, uh, and uh, and really globalization and thinking about uh, how they can incorporate themselves with the rest of the world, uh, leaving behind the traditions, uh, which in that period of time then spr uh, sprang up to political groups called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees were the more uh, traditional uh, conservative group that wanted to go back to the way things were. They wanted to observe the law. Uh, they were uh, socially very conservative, uh, whereas the Sadducees were progressives. They were uh, wanted to integrate with the rest of society. They wanted to think Greek and talk Greek uh, and they were uh, were okay with Rome and were kind of buddy buddy with Rome during the time of the New Testament. But those weren't the only two political groups uh, that we see formed in the uh, in the intertestamental period. Josephus tells us of one other group that does not necessarily come into context in the Gospels, and that's that group is called the Essenes, E S S E N E S, Essenes. The Essenes were actually a group of monks, if you were to think, and of course they wouldn't have used the term monks, but they were monastic. They were they lived an ascetic lifestyle. Uh, they lived out in the caves uh, and took vows of poverty and vows of celibacy uh, and uh, re uh, did lots of ritual cleansings and that type of thing. They would uh, baptize people when they came into their community uh, and they would, uh, they, the reason why they lived uh, apart from Jerusalem, they lived apart from uh, the rest of Jewish society was because they thought that the temple had become corrupt, that all Judaism had become corrupt. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the whole group of them uh, were corrupt with, uh, with Rome, corrupt with, uh, with their legalism, uh, and so they removed themselves from society. The only way that we really come into contact with these people uh, in New Testament survey is because this group of people also was very uh, uh, adamant about maintaining the Jewish scriptures, uh, and they uh, were devoted to the to the uh, to the Jewish scriptures so much so that they copied and made commentaries on 
many of the scriptures. Uh, and the reason why we know that is because there was a community of Essenes uh, in, the, in a village of Qumran, which is near the Dead Sea. Uh, and in 1947, there was a little boy uh, who found a group of caves uh, as he was playing with his brother. Some say that he was he was uh, uh, going after a sheep uh, in a cave. Another one said that he was playing with his brother, playing hide-and-seek with his brother. Uh, and from this ridge that uh, you can kind of see, where this picture is taken from in the, uh, in the image that you're seeing right now, uh, it said that he threw a stone from this ridge, from this vantage point where you can see, into one of those holes, one of those caves across the valley. Uh, and he heard from across the valley, he heard a crack uh, rather than the normal sound of a stone hitting uh, rock. He heard a crack uh, of a clay jar. Uh, went back, went into the caves, did a little more investigation, and the little boy uh, in 1947 discovered the most significant archaeological discovery to all of Christendom uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. This is a group of scrolls found in several caves throughout this uh, the the Dead Sea area uh, that were. Uh, that predate the New Testament. They predate Christ, going back as far as 100 to 150 BC. Uh, and they are faithful adaptations, faithful copies of the Jewish Hebrew scriptures. Uh, some of them were in Greek, some, but most of them were in Hebrew, uh, which gives us quite possibly the most. Uh, and here's again another picture of the, uh, of the cave there uh, that you can see in. Uh, but gave us some of the most significant finds of Old Testament manuscripts that tell us that the manuscripts that we have today are nearly identical to the manuscripts that they had even before the time of Christ. Uh, that's the Essenes. Uh, we don't hear about them at all in the New Testament. Some believe that perhaps John the Baptist had some kind of association with them uh, as he went out into the wilderness, but there's no, no statement in Scripture uh, uh, regarding the Essenes. That brings us to, another, to our next two political groups, which I've already introduced, and that's the Pharisees and the Sadducees. In these two groups were uh, political adversaries. Again, think Republicans and Democrats, or uh, or conservatives and progressives, or liberals. Uh, when you think about the Pharisees, think conservative. Think uh, they were uh, very much into the interpretation of the law. They were interpretations of the Torah. Uh, they were <clears throat> they believed in uh, all of the 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 uh, uh, the uh, miracles that took place in the Old Testament. They interpreted the Old Testament scriptures literally uh, and uh, uh, believed in an afterlife, believed in a resurrection after death, believed in uh, uh, the miraculous of angels and demons and such. Uh, the Pharisees were uh, uh, had originated from the Hasidim. If you remember, we talked about the Hasidim, the, those who were uh, who are separated unto the law. The Sadducees, on the other hand, were uh, progressives. They were uh, they only really observed the Torah. They didn't observe the rest of the Old Testament uh, or the Jewish scriptures. Uh, they did not believe in an afterlife or a resurrection. They didn't believe in angels uh, or any other uh, uh, of the miraculous things or supernatural things that are spoken of in the Old Testament. Uh, because they were uh, accepting of Greek culture, because they were accepting of uh, of outsiders and globalization of Israel, they uh, also then became the upper class. Uh, they were given positions of power, positions of leadership uh, in the temple. And so, when you talk about the priests, when you talk about the uh, the um, uh, the high priests or the chief priests uh, think Sadducees. They're the same group. Uh, and so they were really the, uh, the ones who held the power in Jerusalem, though the Pharisees were more numerous uh, and, had, and, and, prob and, and carried more favor with the people. All right, so that brings us then to a couple more groups to talk a little bit about the scribes. Uh, while the scribes are not 
the uh, uh, are not a political ideology. Think, uh, scribes are actually more of a profession. Uh, Pharisees mostly use scribes, but Sadducees also had scribes as well. Uh, when you see this term in the New Testament or in the Gospels, many times it's translated lawyer or uh, a, a teacher of the law. A scribe was someone who either transcribed or interpreted the Old Testament manuscripts. Uh, and so they were very educated. They many times uh, were capable in languages. Many times they had memorized significant portions of the, uh, of the Torah and the, the Hebrew scriptures. All right. Another group are the Herodians. Again, uh, the Herodians, not necessarily a political ideology, more, like, more of a, uh, a, a political party that supported the Herods or those who, uh, 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 who have been set up by Rome. If you remember last week we talked about the uh, Herod the Great and then all of his children who also happened to be named Herod, hence the Herodians. Uh, they supported the uh, they supported the Herods. Uh, then there's two other groups that we need to talk about: that of the Zealots, uh, who were per, uh, who were basically extremist Pharisees. Uh, the uh, the Zealots were kind of a political terrorist group uh, of assassins who would uh, kind of do the dirty work for the Pharisees. Uh, and so they would perhaps be even more stark contrast to the Herodians. Uh, so if you kind of think of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, think more uh, as, as Republicans and Democrats, think maybe uh, socialists and Tea Party conservatives, uh, kind of more the radical wings of those various parties. Uh, the Zealots refused to pay taxes uh, and uh, uh, and were very much a part of many of the various messianic uprisings uh, that took place in the uh, intertestamental period and in the first century uh, that eventually would lead to the fall of the city of Jerusalem. The zealots would uh, carry with them uh, what they call a sakari, which was a blade of about 12 to 18 inches, uh, curved, uh, kind of a, actually kind of more of a wavy kind of blade, uh, that they would carry under their cloaks, and uh, they would, uh, in the middle of a crowd, uh, pull that out and assassinate someone right there in the middle of the street, uh, put that blade back in their cloak, and just keep going. Uh, so kind of a bad group of guys. So if you kind of think about, uh, remember, Jesus has uh, one of his disciples is Simon the Zealot. So you can kind of think of uh, of him as a uh, as a political right wing. Uh, 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 we would even call him a fundamentalist uh, 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 group. That brings us to our final group, the publicans or the tax collectors. These are again going back to the far left uh, of our political spectrum. Uh, they not only uh, uh, bought into globalization of uh, of the Romans and of the uh, uh, of the um, of Roman rule, but they actually collected taxes from Rome. Uh, what they would do is they would purchase a commission, uh, and so they would actually buy their political office, or they would buy that office from Rome uh, from a certain from a, for a certain. Uh, a dollar amount or a certain amount of gold. And that gold that they would purchase their commission with was the amount of taxes that needed to be collected from that region. So in order to then, uh, they, they would collect that money to pay for their commission and then whatever they could pay, whatever they could collect on top of that would be their salary. Uh, and so of course these guys were thought of as being very corrupt, not only for being in league with Rome, but also because many times they collected far too many taxes and became very wealthy uh, on top of that. So we talk about all these groups. We have the Essenes who don't uh, come into contact with the New Testament, so we don't really talk, uh, cover them in our walkthrough. But then you have the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the Herodians, the Zealots, and the publicans or the tax collectors.
Uh, those are our Jewish sects. Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about the various Jewish institutions that popped up in the first century.